Okay, everybody, get out your pen and paper and write down this number because this is the motherboard I'm going to need your help with this week. This is part one of a two-parter, not because I enjoy the suspense of leaving you on a cliffhanger, but simply because I didn't have a huge amount of time this week. But if you look at this, this is the motherboard we're going to be working on this week. I don't have a lot of information on this, except that it is not booting. It is from Lenovo, as you can see here, and this is the model number GE4B0, GE5B0, and M-D011. I'm going to bring power to this board. It's a USB-C, so I have a USB-C adapter here. I'm going to take some measurements and see what is wrong with it. So this is our USB-C port. I'm going to plug in my USB-C adapter, and I'm going to check for power. Now, as you can see, we have an IC that looks like a PD controller here. But because I'm pressed for time, what I'm going to do is try and find the battery management IC and see if we can check if we're getting the correct input there. On the other side of the board I found this IC so this is a BQ25710 so this is our battery management IC so why did why do I think that this is a good spot to start our troubleshooting here well let me just show you the schematic so this is our BQ25710 SM bus narrow VDC book boost battery charge controller with system power monitor and processor hot monitor. This is our battery management IC. That's just, it's not exactly the greatest name for when you're trying to sell it, really, is it? But if you look down here, you can see that we have our adapter voltage coming in here and our VSYS voltage coming out here. So it's a good spot to measure to make sure that we're getting the correct voltage from our USB adapter that it's negotiated successfully with our PD controller IC and that we have the correct voltage here. And it's also a good spot to check on our VSYS pin to make sure that that regulated lower voltage VSYS power rail is online and going down to all of our secondary power rails. So before taking my measurements and putting the measurements on the screen, I'm going to show you the pinouts for this IC so that we can see things more clearly. The first measurement I took was at the pin 3, which is ACP. And this is the positive side of the current sense resistor on the input to this battery management IC. Easiest place to measure it at this piece of solder right here. So I measured at this point and I found that we had 19.90 volts. Now 19.90 volts means that our USB-C charger has successfully negotiated with our PD controller and given us the correct input voltage for this laptop. The next measurement that I took was at pin 28 reg N. Now if we look up our data sheet we can see that reg N is a 6 volt linear regulator output supplied from VBUS or VSYS. So we should be measuring 6 volts here if this battery management IC is working. And when I measured at this capacitor here, which is connected to pin 28, I found that we had 6.05 volts. So it looks like our battery management IC is functioning correctly. The last measurement I need to take here is a pin 22 on our VSYS power rail to confirm that our VSYS voltage that is going down to all of our secondary power rails is online. And when I measured here, I found that we had 9.26 volts. So our VSYS power rail is online and it looks like we're all good up to this point. Next, we need to confirm that our 3.3 volts always on power is online. So this is PU3, and this is the IC that is responsible for producing our 3.3 volts always on power rail. Let me show you the pinouts for this. Okay, so what we should be expecting here is to find that we have our VSYS voltage coming in here as the input to this IC on these four pins, two, three, four, and five. We should expect to find that we have 3.3 volts on our LDO pin number 15 here and we should find 3.3 volts on our switched higher current output on pins 19 and 20. So let's check and see if we are getting those correct voltages. Here are the voltage measurements that I recorded. On pins 2, 3, 4 and 5, which I measured from here, I found out that we had 9.26 volts. So our VSYS power rail is making it to our PU3 IC.
So checking on the outputs, we check pin 15 and we find that we have 3.34 volts here. And checking on our higher current switched 3.3 volts output, we measure 3.34 volts here also. So this looks good. We've got our always on 3.3 volts power and our higher current 3.3 volts power rail. So let's check our power button next. I checked out my schematic to see where the power button was. It's not actually on this board, it's on a daughter board and that daughter board connects in through this connection right here. If we mark out the pins for that connector, we can see there are 40 pins. And of those pins, we find that pin 20 is actually where our power switch comes in. So I checked initially, I did a voltage check on pin 20, and I found that it measured 3.30 volts. To emulate the power button being pressed, I did the same as we've done in previous videos. I jumpered pin 20 to ground. But when I did this, nothing happened. So we've tried jumpering the power switch to ground at the connection where the power switch comes onto the motherboard and that has done nothing. But I wanted to try and do the same thing right at the Super I.O. This is the Lenovo IT8227E Super I.O. And if we mark in the pins, we can see that our power switch should come in on pin 110. If I zoom in on that, you can see that our power switch is connected out here to this resistor and when I initially took a voltage measurement on this I found that it measured 3.17 volts. I tried jumpering this to ground to emulate the power button being pressed but again there was no response. No CPU warming up, no LEDs coming on, no power rails coming online. So from our diagnosis so far, we have established that our PD controller is communicating with our charger. We're getting the correct input voltage, which is 19.90 volts. Our battery management IC also appears to be working because we're getting our VSYS power rail of 9.26 volts. Our always on power, our 3.3 volts power rail is also present. And I'm detecting that voltage on our power button pin coming in on that connector. When I jumper that to ground, we are getting no reaction from the laptop at all. So it seems like all of our standby voltages are correct, but something is preventing this laptop from powering on when we press the power button. So what reason could my laptop motherboard possibly have for not switching on? Well, one reason could be if there was a short on any of the secondary power rails. So the next thing I checked was for diode mode readings at all of our secondary inductors. So I switched off the power, switched my multimeter into diode mode and took the following readings. At PL7, I measured 0 0.32. At PL9, I measured 0 0.062. At this inductor here, which doesn't seem to be marked, is 0 0.042. At this inductor right here, which is PL4, I measured 0 0.509. At this inductor here, PL3, I measured 0 0.59. At PL6, 0 0.207. PL12 and PL13 both measured 0 0.144. PL8, 0 0.285. And those are all the measurements that I took. So as you can see, none of them is a low enough reading that I can deduce a short on any of the secondary power rails. Now, I'm sure some of you noticed, there's marks on these capacitors right here. I'm not sure if this is indicative of a spill or if these marks were left behind by a piece of plastic that was originally on top of this section of the motherboard and was ripped off. What does it look like to you? I'm going to continue to work on this motherboard during the week, but if you have any comments or suggestions as to what you think might help get a resolution to the issues with this laptop motherboard, please post in the comments below.
If you like what I do, please like and subscribe, and I'll be back with part two of this motherboard repair next week.